I've been into building and flying all kinds of FPV drones, but when it comes to 5 inch freestyle, well, I've mostly been sticking to budget mid tier builds. Today, I've finally decided that I'm going to step up my game and build a premium and high end 5 inch freestyle FPV drone, and I'm going to go all out. But first, let me give you a little background on why I'm doing this. You see, I've been in a bit of a rut lately when it comes to flying FPV. About a year and a half ago, I moved to the inner city and I moved from the western suburbs. So I haven't been able to get up early and fly before work like I used to. I mean, as cool as it would be to rip a five inch through the apartment buildings and the concrete jungle that I live in, there's just too many Karens around, I, right? I am actually, you're, in fact, yes, taking the You're taking my, my property. Well, you know, there's been a lot of comings and goings of UPS trucks in this neighborhood. What about, what about a that? A lot of packages coming so? to this house particular. Well, something's going on in there. Something's so, going on so in there. So it's, it's no, Amazon. I'm taking the package. It's my Amazon I'm, wish sir, list. I'm taking the package. No, you're not taking no, my package. Am, That's no, my excuse stuff. Me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I did not you kill you. Killed You're fine. Me. You, oh my God. you sprayed me with whatever. I feel like all of my FPV gear is sitting on the shelves collecting dust, and it's almost as if my goggles and radio are staging a silent protest against my lack of flying time. So I thought to myself, what better way to reignite my passion for FPV than by taking on a new challenge? And that's how I landed on the idea of building a high end 5 inch freestyle drone. Because I want this build to not hold me back from being able to find the limit of my skills and then allow me to learn and go further. But most importantly, help me fall in love with FPV all over again. To make this build a reality, I had to do some serious research. I mean, I wasn't about to just throw any old parts together and resort to the typical budget and mid-tier parts that I have been using. And I wanted to choose components that were the top of the line that wouldn't compromise on quality, reliability, and performance. The first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need a frame. And I've got the Quad Mueller F5 Siren, and it's the split version. And I feel like this is a chamois, like you get to clean your car. Then for motors, we've got the T-Motor F60 Pro 4s in 1750 kV. These are beautiful motors. They're 2207, 1750 kV. These are perfect for freestyle. These are very premium motors and I'm very thankful to T-Motor for sending them to me. Also, those motors need to connect to an ESC. So we are going to be running the T-Motor Velox 50 amp 3-6S 32-bit 4-in-1 EFC. So this is a premium EFC as well. And then we've got our T-Motor F7 HD flight controller. We've also got the different TPU parts for, for the Quad Mueller Siren. And I'm going to be using Express LRS with the Radio Master RP1 with an antenna. But our video system today is going to be the DJI 03 Air Unit. So the top of the line you can get when it comes to FPV video transmission. And since we've got green TPU from Quad Mueller, the green TPU is in there. I've chosen to go with some GemFan J Green Freestyle. 5.1 by 3 by 3 props. So some jade green. So this is going to be a green machine build. So there are all the different parts that we're going to be using today. So the first thing we're going to need to do is woo, first thing we're going to need to do is get this frame assembled. Now I have to say that the Quad Mueller Siren F5 split was a dream to work with. Those pre-pressed press nuts was a very nice touch because I find those to be a pain in the butt on other frames. But one of the most genius parts of this build was the center plate with the C-lock structure. It held the arms in place with only one bolt and it also secured the stack screws. Now this is where I was a little surprised because they use M2 stack screws and since most 5 inch builds use M3 hardware, it was a little bit perplexing. Quadmula came through, see what they do is some clever stuff. They take PVC soft tubing that goes over those M2 screws, which beefs them up to be M3 size, but it still keeps them soft enough to prevent any unwanted vibrations getting to the flight controller, even with gummies. So the flight controller and ESC are super soft mounted. I also have to give props to Quad Mueller for using countersunk screws pretty much everywhere. Not only do they look premium, but they also protect the screws from getting damaged when the frame hits the ground. The TPU parts, like the arm guards, the front lip, 
and the GoPro mount? Well, Cord Mueller used what they call a PS3 or Profile Spacer 3, and it's this nifty little thing that stops the screws punching through the TPU. With the frame all set, it was time to install the ESC, install the motors and the battery lead. I then had to pin the connectors between the flight controller and the ESC to make sure everything was communicating properly, as well as the HD plug on the flight controller to the DJI 03 air unit. Finally, I wired up the Radio Master RP1 and then we were ready to put it all together and configure it in Betaflight. But before we could dive into Betaflight, we did have to perform the most important test of all, the smoke stopper test. This little device checks for any shorts or dodgy wiring. Check. And lucky for me, everything powered up. Plus, I was pleasantly surprised to hear the different ESC tone, which was refreshing because it wasn't that usual boring old startup tone. Now, onto the configuration. First up was activating the DJI 03 air unit. And since it only needs USB power to activate, unlike the Vista, which requires battery power, that was pretty straightforward. But I didn't realize this would actually lead to an issue when I first powered it up. More on that a little later. Next, I jumped into Betaflight and started by taking a backup of the stock configuration before flashing Betaflight 4.4. Then I went through all the different tabs and set up the configuration. But I'm going to say I'm really loving this native ESC configuration in Betaflight 4.4. Being able to set your motor order and motor direction inside of Betaflight is really, really handy. So. And now it's time to get the perfect tune. You don't need to be a tuning expert or a black box magician. You just use the Superfly 5 inch freestyle preset and it worked like a charm. And we'll see just how well it performed later on in the flight footage. The final step of the configuration process was flashing my receiver, the latest version of ExpressLRS, which included my binding phrase. With all of the configuration done, all that was left to do was to buy my DJI 03 air unit with my DJI FPV goggles V2. And let's keep our fingers crossed for no surprises. Air unit mode. Right. We have a problem. Just your three air units not getting power. So let the fun begin where we have to pull this all apart and check everything out. Now, ideally, mm, you should have, we should have checked out everything before we put it all together. When we did our smoke stop test, we should have checked to make sure, oh, the O3 air, the air, the air unit's powering up. But we didn't, because I was just like, yeah, we're done. Yeah, time to go in, because I did everything right. Time to go and like, fire it up. Meanwhile, I didn't. What the problem turned out to be was the pins on the DJI cable and the HD plug on the flight controller, well, they just didn't fit when I repinned them. So the O3 air unit wasn't receiving any power. The HD plug and the included cable designed for the original DJI air unit. So I found myself in a dilemma. Should I cut the cables and solder the wires together or try something else? <sighs> but that involves Does t have... Oh, fuck. After about 10 minutes of stuffing around and stewing over what I should do, I ended up cutting the connector off the end of the DJI 03 air unit and then soldered the wires to the pins at the back of the HD plug on the flight controller. Now, it was certainly janky, but it was a better option than destroying two cables. Sometimes you just gotta get creative and make it work. Now, with that hiccup out of the way, it was finally time to get this fully assembled and take the Quad Mule, the Siren F5, out for its maiden flight. Even though the day was a little overcast, I couldn't wait to get out there and see what this beast could do. And sure, I was just heading to the local business park where I normally fly, but you know what? Pilots gotta fly, right? And that's kind of what we're trying to do, is get back into flying. Now that I've flown away, I can sit down and fly it with you and talk through it. 
Alrighty, alright. Um. Ah. Uh, yes. Here we go. Ooh. Of course, DJI 03 Air Unit. Really, really nice. I didn't charge my GoPro Mini, so we're just gonna fly with the Mini on there from a weight perspective. But. That is super sweet. We'll fly with the Mini on it from a weight perspective, but. Oh! It's a bit awkward. Fly with, yeah, we're gonna fly with the Mini on it from a weight perspective, but um, we're gonna just use the, the DJI 03 air unit for DVR. Oh, look at that. Man, this is so smooth. I tell you what, I mean, some I've flown, you know, some quads that are really nice to fly. Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of the stuff I built is really nice to fly, but um, sort of just don't appreciate how high-end components like these T-Motor F60 motors are just really juicy. Like, they're really nice. At 1750 kV, they're perfect. Uh, and also, we're just going to... Oh, look at all that trash, man. Clean up your mess. Don't be a tosser. Oh, we've got some people over there. Man, look at this. Look at this. Look. I mean, check out this penetration. There's a tree. There's probably knife edge through there. That is just super juicy. <laughs> Man, this is sick. And I tell you what, this, this isn't tuned. Well, it is, but it isn't, right? So tune-wise, I didn't go and black box tune this to the nth degree, right? This is, the tune I'm, I'm literally flying is Betaflight 4.4 with the Superfly 5-inch preset. And this thing is locked in on rails, and that's, a testament to a couple of things. So firstly, obviously Superfly's ability to just provide a preset that is amazing. Betaflight 4.4 and just how well that makes anything fly. But more importantly, none of that matters if you have a really poorly constructed frame, lots of resonance, lots of movement, lots of play, and it just isn't tight and there's a lot of just wobbliness in it having everything super soft mounted as we'll get into um in the build having everything super soft mounted in the build just makes oh and i can see the gopro in the screen as well right um oh. I have a feeling, I have a feeling we've, uh, we've busted a prop. So let's go check it out. I ended up enjoying all my packs, zipping around and exploring the area. But this build's also been quite a journey. 
and we made it through and I'm just stoked with how well this turned out. But there's also some more key things that I learned along the way, which I think are worth keeping in mind. If you're feeling stuck like I was, consider giving yourself a new challenge. And whether that's investing in some top-notch gear and building a high-end freestyle drone, perhaps if it's not, do the exact opposite, go super budget. And maybe another option could be swapping a five inch for a tiny whoop. You never know, it just might reignite your passion for FPV and help you break out of your rut. But also investing in quality components does actually make a difference, and I didn't think it would have. You see, investing in quality parts like the Quad Mule Siren F5 Split or the T-Motor F60 Pro 4, those motors and the frame can greatly improve your drone's performance, which makes it even more enjoyable to fly. But you also want to be prepared for the unexpected. After all, that's just what happens in FPV. Even when you think you've got everything sorted, there might be surprises along the way. So you need to stay flexible, adapt, and try and solve the different challenges you may encounter. And those challenges can be really fun, even though they may be frustrating. But ultimately, don't forget to have fun. You see, FPV is all about enjoying the experience, both the building process and the flight process. So no matter what you're working on, remember to have a good time and enjoy the journey. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to Quad Mueller and to T-Motor for sponsoring this build. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible. Quad Mueller provided the frame, T-Motor with the motors and the electronics. But ultimately, I hope this video has left you feeling inspired to tackle your own FPV projects, whether it's a high-end build or just tinkering with your existing gear. Whatever your FPV journey looks like, just remember, stay curious, keep learning, and most importantly, have fun. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.